Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Season 1, Episode 2 of Mayfair Witches. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So first and foremost, we have that opening, because at first I was like, oh, so are we going to get to like, some deep, deep lore, and it's like... Maybe, maybe not. I can only assume, like, that whole opening in Scotland, 16, was it, 81? I was like, are these, like, the, May this is where the Mayfair witch's lineage technically starts with that person, Suzanne, because she was hearing voices. I also love that it's like, yeah, like, everything witch-related, at least with the Mayfairs, revolves around wo the woods. But to be fair, like, was it, uh, Cyprian was kind of like, yeah, I mean, he told that story to Rowan later on about the woods, so I'm like, maybe they're all, because that that's kept what I kept being about, uh, referencing, because I know, like, using the originals and stuff like that, the witch's power there in New Orleans stemmed from the ancestors. That's where they were channeling their power from and everything, right? So that's what I, I said in the first episode, wondering whether or not these woods were kind of that. Were they supposed to be like legitimate woods that are like enchanted or something? Or are they supposed to be like a manifestation or just kind of ancestral power that like flows through them, whatever the case may be. Because I I'd assume the May obviously because of the show's name, it is the Mayfair Witches. So like that family's gonna be at the center photo of all this. So that's why I thought like Suzanne might be like an ancestor. She might be like the I was, I don't even know if I'd say first, maybe there were witches before her, but maybe that's as far, like, that's going to be such a pivotal point before they became the Mayfair witches, or I don't know, or maybe that was just nature calling out to her something or, or someone reaching out to her, her hearing those voices, and that made her, like, she was the first witch, maybe? I don't, I don't I'm, cause I was also like, would they really go as far back, only go like 1681? Would, would they, or would they go for, you know, so like, there's so many questions I have on that front, and we only got a little bit of that at the beginning, so. No telling what that will fully spring into later on. Uh, but other than that, we had Rowan kind of finding out, oh, cool, my mom's gaslit me my entire life. She's like, yeah, I'm calling up this agency. My mom was looking into my birth parents uh, the entire time. It's like, yeah, that's not possible. Uh, you're talking about 91? We wouldn't have any records from 91 because we didn't become an adoption agency place until 1995. And it's like, oh, cool. Not only is my mom dead and I'm processing, I'm dealing with that. Oh, cool. Everything my mom's told me was a lie. She's like, no, 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 no. My mom told me the story like every year and we would go by your offices. I was like, man, she doubled. Like, man, that's, that's gaslighting to the own degree. And that's the sad thing. It's like, I get it. Ellie was told, hey, protect this child, this child may never, must never know what they are, I get it, I understand, but it's still super messed up, because now you're dead, and you can't give her any of the answers she needs and deserves, because it's like, I think it's that thing of, hey, you don't, what you don't know can't hurt you, but it's like, no, what you don't know can come and get you because you're unprepared because you don't know what's out there coming to get you. So it becomes that conundrum. And that's exactly uh, Cyprian's point of like, she deserves to know so she can at least protect herself. It's like, well, she doesn't need to protect herself. You're there. It's like his boss is kind of, was it Samir or whatever? Like, I guess he's like the head honcho, like overseer of all of this. Um, I get, or just maybe in particular Cyprian's boss, but it's like, come on, man. Like you're, I get it, but it's also like, that's, that's such a cop out to some extent. So you're like, but Cyprian's just kind of like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cause he's watching Rowan struggle. I, I guess that ability he has is specifically his. Like when he saw last year, last episode, I was like, what is that? Like, is, I was like, is he piercing through a veil? It seems like it's more so like he can read the history and the memories attached to an object. Um, like when he touches an object, he can kind of see, like break through kind of the space time, like see a vision of, I don't know if like he can like kind of, is a projection of a, uh, strong memories tied to an object or something like that. I don't know. Or just, it gives him the ability to kind of like uh, anchor himself and then like he can push through time. I don't know if it's like any point in time related to an object he's touching or just once again, those of a strong emotion. Does he have to like focus? Like we don't know how his quote unquote gift works. So, but uh, yeah, we, Rowan's had it pretty rough. She tries to go back to work. work. Keck is like, nah, you can't do that. It's like, I mean, which is also like, hey, you're back to work. I mean, it's like, good thing I didn't almost kill you like I did Daniel, who I did straight up kill. So it's like, fine, you want to be back at work? Because she's looking at it as a personal attack because he doesn't, the way he talked to her last episode, which, you know, like a, like a, like a, eh, like a douche. Let's leave it at that. Uh, 
she kind of thought it was kind of him being like being just messy and being a douchebag again. But it's like, oh, go see the therapist. She's like, fine. And the psychologist. And she's like, yeah, I'm sleeping fine. I'm grieving my mom. I went to her grave today and cried. Like, is that what makes you feel happy? It's like, okay, what about Daniel? Yeah, so what? It's like he died in front of me. He's like, yeah, people die in front of me all the time. It's like, yeah, but in an environment where you can control, this is outside of the operating room. This is just out in the wild. Like, that still got to hit you. And because she was getting all fidgety and nervous, her power started happening. She was like freaking out. I was like, oh, God, oh, God, please don't let me kill this lady. Like, yeah, she's making me nervous and I'm freaking out because I just, I need my job. I need to focus on something. Because that's also the thing, too. Keck was like, yeah, you're, uh, you're, there, you're, people were under anesthesia 1.3 times longer than normal. She's like, but that's still faster than any other doctor. He's like, yeah, but obviously you're not at 100%. It's like, to be fair, yes, he's a dick. Two things can be true. He's a dick, but also it's like you are not in a condition to be operating. You're No matter how good you are, I wouldn't want you operating on me when you've literally gone through something harsh like losing your mom. And then also, let's not add on, like they just know like, oh, you lost your mom. Once again, we as the audience know you lost your mom, plus you found out your mom has been lying to you your entire life. So it's like, boom, boom. You know, it's like, it's, it's, you just don't know how to feel. And so, uh, her therapist, like the more she started questioning herself, the more her nose started bleeding. She left, found a whole bunch of like birds, probably like crows or ravens, like crapped on a car. She ends up killing three of them. She goes and buries him. Because I, I thought she took... Initially, I was like, oh, well, you're a doctor. So I thought maybe you took the birds so she can do an autopsy on them to kind of figure out what actually killed him. And then she'll probably be like, oh, my God, it's the same thing that happened to the other. I thought that's what happened. It's like, no, she buried the crows. It's just... Or the birds. It's just... I think she just didn't want to leave any dead birds around because it's just like... It's just She's in panic mode. She's not thinking straight. She just didn't want to leave any evidence behind to be like, oh, what happened to these birds? They just suddenly died. Huh? I wonder what killed these birds. And maybe she was scared that some people would make some connection between that and Daniel's death and what happened to Keck. But it's like, no one would put piece that together. So... She's, like, losing her mind until, you know... Uh, Cyprian, like, finally, she finally, like, noticed, well, she's noticed it throughout the episode, the SV, SUV that's following her, and now she's like, right, who are you? And he's like, I'm not here to hurt you, I know what you're going through, I can help you, but I think the moment he touched her, like, it sent him, and either it was her powers, or just her, in general, just everything going on, sent her into overload, sent him into overload, and he almost died, but the moment he woke up, he was like, dude, I got to get the hell out of here, because I guess it's like, yeah, the last thing I need to do is be admitted and so that this be on some official record because that, I guess we're supposed to be like not official. We're not supposed to exist because he, I mean, it makes sense when he broke into, when he broke into uh, Rowan's boat, he did wear gloves. So I was like, are you, and it did seem like he was trying not to leave fingerprints behind. So it's like, you're supposed to kind of be anonymous or maybe you're supposed to be quote unquote dead. Just like Rowan's supposed to be dead. So... Because I think she's not the only one. Like, I think everyone a part of that whole kind of almost, I guess, you know, stealing a little bit from Charmed. It's almost supposed to be like a witch, uh, witchness protection program of like, yeah, we help you, dis we help witches disappear type of thing. Uh, for whatever multitude of circumstances that might be putting them in danger. Which we do catch up with, um... Deirdre and Lasher, who comes to her, is like, right, your uh, your daughter, she's out there. I'm leading her to you. All you have to do is wake up and get there. Luckily, she's got the doctor, uh, what's his name? I think his name is Billy, maybe? That doctor is helping out, which I'm still like, why, though? I guess, because he's like, right, I'm trying to get you out of here. She's like, do you need, I could get a lawyer here, but it's going to take maybe weeks or months. She's like, I appreciate it, but I can't stay here. He's like, don't worry, I'm not going to medicate you. You just got to be patient. Um, I'm all, I, I meant to bring this up last episode, but I thought maybe it was a moot point because, well, Deirdre is older, but I was like, dude, witches age slower in this universe? Because I know that is sometimes a thing of just like, oh yeah, like, witches can age, like, not like, I don't think it's like vampire, vampiric longevity, but I think witches sometimes can have, I mean, it also just depends, like, I mean, what, what was the witches of Eastwick? Oh god, there was the one, I, I'm hope am I remembering its name? Or was it just, no, I'm a... Well, that's one thing, but I'm also thinking about, uh, the, is it just the witches? It's the, oh god, the original had Angelica Houston and the remake had Anne Hathaway. And, uh, was it Octavia Spencer? Was she the mom in that? Or the, I don't, maybe? Was that Octavia Spencer? I remember the movie, like the remake, I never saw the, the remake, I only saw like trailers for it, but I'm like, 
I'm trying to remember if that was Octavia Spencer. I definitely remember uh, Anne Hathaway's playing the Angelica Houston role. Um, tangents and all that aside, my point is like they look the way they do, but it could also look like young and beautiful in their their whole their whole thing. Um, I don't know, my, my point is like I was, and like her mom's still alive. I'm like, well, I mean, I guess it just depends on how old. I was like, her mom, her aunt. Well, at least one of them. Uh, I'm assuming the other one that we saw last episode two is still alive, but it's like, oh, I mean, and it looks like she's getting older and obviously, uh, Deirdre like is aging too. So I'm like, but it could just be a thing of like you age slower, but it feels like she's aging at like a normal human rate. So I guess there, that's why I was like, it's probably like a moot point, but I figured I'd just, you know, bring it up in this episode regardless. But, um. Yeah, her aunt, uh, was it, Carlotta, um, is the one that's kind of mainly pushing it. Once again, we haven't seen the other aunt. Carlotta's, like, the main, like, evil aunt who's borderline evil stepmother status. Uh, went to go see her uncle, which I'm like, that's the thing, like, you don't do anything to, like, you don't do anything to stop the aunts. And I'm like, but why, though? He's, because apparently, like, um... Uh, Deirdre told this story of like, oh yeah, like anytime you would buy me a dress and, uh, Carlotta would find out she would shred them. And it's like, yeah, sometimes I wonder if it was better off not having them at all, gents to have them and have it ripped apart. Once again, very, very evil stepmother from Cinderella. Um, well, I mean, you know, d depending on, uh, you know, if you, if you go by the more traditional sense or do you go by like the, the remixed version they went with, uh, for, uh. Once Upon a Time, that's a whole storyline. If, if you know, if you've seen Once Upon a Time, you know what I mean by like the evil stepmother storyline, how they kind of remix that. But, you know, my, my point is, I'm, I'm curious um, why he didn't really do anything. Like, is he limited in what he can do? Also, once again, you also set up the whole Lasher and that guy being like, you set that up, but you made it seem like it. Like, I don't know if Deirdre ever found out about that. So. Cause even he, cause he's like, wait, is he here? And it's like, no, uh, where is he? And she's like, even I, even after all these years, even I still haven't quite figured out like how, I think how his whole shtick worked. Like when she wants to communicate with him and focus, like she puts the key on that, 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 or that key necklace on, that's a, like a bind between them. And it makes, I guess it makes it easier. It's not like it's a sure fire thing, but it seems like it at least it's easier to kind of summon him in that regard. Also, that was wild when, like, Deirdre and Lasher banged it out and Rowan fell down. I was like, that's weird. Your biological mom is getting hers and you kind of getting yours at the same time. That's weird. I mean, I get it. All three of you were connected, but still. Like, I don't know if, like, Lasher is technically... Because I was thinking, like, oh, did Lasher possess the dude or something? Like, oh, that guy's, like, my surrogate, you know, my surrogate spunk. And, yeah, so she's technically mine or it was me through you and your eggs and some some chosen guy sp I, I have no idea but like Cortland maybe Cortland and um Lasher because because I they were standing side by side made me think last episode they were in this together but maybe it wasn't maybe it's just like Lasher was there doing his own thing because Cortland probably can't see Lasher I don't know how many people own him well no, because he's he has been caught on he got caught on photograph because Cyprian has a picture. Well, there's a picture on Cyprian's phone that has a uh, um uh, and like lashers in the window. Um, so I guess he just can be seen with his whole circumstances. Once again, I'm still leaning in Lucifer slash Satan type of thing, you know, but I don't know. Rowan finds her way to New Orleans after seeing those pictures off of Cyprian's uh, phone. And obviously later on he found out what she was up to. So he's like, all right, I can explain everything. You know, it's like, she's like, why should I trust you? And he's like, right, the person who helped me control my gift. I, basically, I guess it's a story they kind of pass it down over and over again of like, right, these two men in the woods. It's like, right, uh, why should I trust you and go in the woods with you? It's like... Well, so you can learn from my mistakes and I can learn from what you, uh, basically let's so say we can both learn from our past mistakes and we can find our way through this together. We've both made mistakes along the road. So let's both follow our own, like, let's follow this path together and not do what we've done before. Make sure we don't repeat those same mistakes. So, um, 
obviously, uh, Deidre ends up confronting her aunt at the hotel. Because uh, I, I think that is kind of interesting that obviously, like, Corlotta wouldn't know it because she hasn't seen Rowan since she was a baby. And there was no, like, familial sensation that kicked off. But it's just kind of like, yeah, they literally walked past each other. I was like, oh, that's interesting. And you would have thought she got a sense of something, but she didn't know Rowan was there at all until uh, Deidre, um, Deirdre said anything. Which I guess kind of adds into, like, right, witches in this universe aren't, like, omnipotent. Being able to kind of see and know everything. So, I mean, maybe like the top tier witches or something like that. But at least in this case, they, they just seem like, hey, we're probably normal enough humans, but we're not gods. What I thought was interesting, too, like when um, Deidre was like um, using Lasher, like kind of almost uh, kind of puppeteering him to some extent. But it was more so like she was seeing through his eyes because he was reaching and she's like, no, because he still had free will of his own. But it's like. Right, by channeling herself through him, she could see through his eyes and they become one. But when she was saying it, she was using like Latin spell. I'm assuming it's Latin. I could be completely wrong. But she was like, me, uh, what, what was she saying? Because basically it's like, uh, my daemon or something like that. But I was like, I was like, oh, because she was saying it a very distinct way. I was like, oh, is that how you would actually say that? Because it, it's, I think it's, I don't know if it's just like a, uh, a different languished version of the word, but like, that's demon, isn't it? So I was like, is she just saying my demon? So I was like, is that what Lasher is? I mean, we know he, once again, devil, saint, he's kind of everything and nothing at the same time. That was the whole point he made last episode. But I was curious, like, is he supposed to be like your specific demon because you're bound together? Kind of almost like, he's kind of like your shadow um, to some extent. But it's, because I was... I'm, they're not. It's not the only one that's done this, but I think of 15, Final Fantasy fifteen because that's how demons is spelled in Final Fantasy fifteen. D A E M O N. Um, or is it like D A E O M O N? E either way, you, like that's. But they don't say like demons. It, they just say demons. But I don't know. I don't know if it changes in Japanese or not. In English, it's just demons. So. Like I said, I don't know if that's just kind of like maybe like the more um, Latin root to the word. And then it's just like Anglos, the, the more Anglo-Saxon version is just this traditional D-E-M-O-N demon. I, I, I don't know. Um, but that, that that line of like basically like meet my demon, it seemed like that was she was saying. And I was like, oh, is that what that? What? All right. Once again. A lot of questions. That's the thing. You're just... It's, that's the interesting thing because, like, Rowan is kind of a surrogate for you. I mean, obviously, storytelling-wise, you need that character who is learning everything about this world so it makes it easier for you to learn about it as well. So it's like, right, you can put yourself in Rowan's shoes because she's confused by everything. You're doubly confused, too. But when... Um, Deirdre, like, goes up the stairs and be like, oh, because uh, my daughter's here, uh, if I'm awake, he's awake. And then, like, the painting right beside... Uh, Corlotta ends up shifting and changing like, oh yeah, lady, I'm here. So I guess by keeping her dormant, you were able to keep him dormant all these years. But now he's like, he's waking up because she's waking up. Um, but the moment she gets in the elevator, I was like, damn, I was like, her and, um, her and, um, oh God, Rowan are going to miss each other. I was like, the elevator did stop on the sixth floor. I was like, oh, that's interesting. I was like, uh, whatever. I was like, the elevator is going to open. She's going to go in, and Deidre is going to come through there. I was like, they're just going to miss each other. And then the elevator opens. She's in there. I was like, hey. And then it was like her next time. I was like, no. I was like, come on. She just lost her her mom, Ellie, and now you're telling me her bio mom is dead too. It's like now it makes sense why the elevator stopped on the sixth floor because like she specifically went to the tenth floor. I put it in the tent floor because she knew that's where Rowan was. And for it to stop on the sixth floor, someone stopped the elevator, slit her throat, and sent her back up. Maybe. That had to be magical based, maybe. Because the way she was just standing there just seemed like, and then all of a sudden the wound started bleeding. So it had to be magic based or something. Or maybe it was a kind of like, you know, you know, the, 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 the badass swordsman thing of like, oh, I'm a slash. And then I'm going to sheathe my sword, and that's when the... Or, you know, the one that everyone kind of goes to. Kinshiro, like, fist in the North Star. You're already dead. You, well, I guess it's because a little crowish as well. They're already dead. They just don't know it yet. 
Um, but it's kind of like that. It's like, oh yeah, you died like three minutes ago and you just didn't even know it. Oh, boom, boom, your body explodes. Fist of the North Star style. It's kind of what, going back to the analogy I was making. So, I don't know. That sucks. That sucks big time. Because she's supposed to be meeting up with Cyprian too. And it's just like, oh, face to face, trying to find my biological mother. And it's just like, yeah, all hell like broke loose. And everything went so wrong. It's like, right, she finally got reunited with you after all this time. Both of you got reunited. You didn't even get a chance to talk to each other. That was kind of taken from you. When like Lasher is still there, like she might be gone, but Lasher has already made contact with, uh, and the, the connection with uh, Rowan is already there. So it's not like, oh, she dies, like Lasher dies with her, but maybe it impedes him a little bit. Because part of me is like, oh, I, I feel like it wouldn't be Cyprian, even though he's on his way to the hotel, just because, well, he wouldn't have any reason to do that. You know, even if it was to protect Rowan, but so I'm like, I'm leaning towards like maybe her uncle, maybe her aunt, maybe someone else tied to the Mayfair stuff. I don't know. It's just, it's sad. This was finally her moment. Freedom after all these years just to end up this way. It's kind of a shame. Not kind of, it just straight up is a shame. So we'll have to wait to see where all this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy. Be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.